I've been your kid, and I'm all right. I am all. YouTubers, Black Country Trucker here. What is tramping? Well, in this video, I'm going to tell you what tramping is, what you need for tramping, what you don't need. These are only my opinions. Tramping is where you spend the night in your truck. The truck you've driven all day, you're going to spend the night. I say night, when I mean night, I mean you're going to sleep in your truck because you could do a, a night shift and sleep in the day. Loads of companies do it. That is what tramping is. You're sleeping in your truck and you could do that for one night, you could do that for five nights, four nights. You can even do it for months if you go to Europe, for instance. So what do you need for tramping? Well, if, first of all, your bedding is most important to get a good comfortable night's sleep which you need being a trucker I would suggest good quality bedding I really would right don't just put in this is my opinion don't forget don't just put your sheet on your mattress because I guarantee you whatever dirty horrible stinker has been in that truck before you you're gonna smell them Right, and they are going to absolutely do your nutting, that smell all night is going to do your nutting. So what you need to do is find out first of all, come on you got to let me in here, you need to find out first of all if the truck you're using is going to be your truck if you're going to be the only person who uses that truck. If that's the case, then I would suggest spending a bit of money, right? Go onto a company like Pimp's Truck and get a vinyl mattress cover. I think they're about 80, 90 quid. But you can have it any colour you want. But then you know that whatever crap or stink is on the mattress is concealed in that mattress cover. Failing that, you could do the cheap option if you know you haven't going to be keeping the truck for long or you're changing trucks regular uh, try and get you, get yourself to somewhere like B&M or somewhere and just get a cheap mattress topper and what you'll have to do is wrap the mattress up inside it and then you can think about what's going to be comfortable underneath your sheet because you're not going to want to put the sheet on top of a vinyl cover or even on top of a mattress cover because you're not going to be really comfortable. What I would do is get a fleece blanket like this one and put that underneath your sheet. If you put it underneath your sheet, it's going to keep the warmth in, but it's all going to, also going to stop you sweating against the vinyl cover. And then, definitely a quilt. How people sleep in a sleeping bag is beyond me. I used to do it when I was a kid and went camping, but not anymore. Proper quilt. And a, and a couple of pillows because the reason I say, even if you only sleep with one pillow at home, and you might not even sleep with any pillows, but you want some pillows for the simple reason. Depending on where you're pulling up on the night time, you might have your truck down a slope, it could be uh, you've had to put the driver's side on a curb, but you like your head to be the passenger side, or you know, vice versa. However, you like to, to sleep. I would say a good couple of cushions. I've got some pillows on my settee, what I call it, because it's the bottom bed. Nobody sleeps in there, I'll just sit on there. And if I ever have to pull up on a slope, you can put your head. You know, you, you can get yourself level and then put your head up on the pillow or cushion. And, th and that is what you want to be doing. Mercedes beds, they're brilliant because you can actually pull the back of the beds up and get them on a, you know, quite a nice incline, depending on how you like to sleep, obviously. But that's what I would do bed-wise. And also, never sleep in your clothes. That's just dirty and stupid because the sweat you've gained all day in your clothes 
that would be freezing on the night time and that's how you catch pneumonia so that's what I'd do bedding wise um, next thing most important is drink and I don't mean beer I mean drink a lot of people make the mistake of buying a drink when they want one from service stations, shops and so on and so forth and that just costs an absolute fortune a can of Relentless for instance right? Relentless energy drink you might think good I'll have me a Relentless keep me awake keep me active keep me you know ready to go and a can of Relentless at the services can be £2.40 no shitting you £2.40 Relentless at Tesco's extra petrol station, 89 pence. So, no brainer, start of the week or start of your working week, get yourself a few drinks that you like. What I do is I buy a bottle of that and that lasts me about two weeks. And I have six two litre bottles of water a week and I think there's 30 pence or something from Lidl, cheap. And then you just make your own juice up in one of these. You can put it in the fridge on the night time and then when you get it out it's nice and cool. Because hydration is a, is a must, especially if you're doing a lot of driving, otherwise you'll be getting a lot of headaches. As for hot drinks, you can buy a cigarette lighter kettle for about 25 quid um, I think on, on Amazon I think they're about 12 quid something like that they're not very expensive get one of those you can make yourself your hot drinks teas, coffees, hot chocolates bob rolls, whatever you want even pot noodles so that's what I would do drink wise food wise if you're lucky enough, lucky enough to have a fridge in your truck that's built in, not a, you know, an external fridge that you have to plug in to a cigarette lighter yourself, then you can keep food in there obviously. Your own sandwich stuff, it's all about saving money and eating healthy basically. I keep um, butter, cheese slices, salad cream, mayonnaise, tomato ketchup, uh, microwave meals because I've got a microwave all sorts of things that I keep in the fridge and I know that I can have some food when I want to at any time in the day on a break and I haven't got to pay for it or look for a shop to pay for it because the last thing you want to be doing is trying to find a shop when you're in the middle of nowhere in a lay boy because you're not going to find one without walking miles you can get yourself an external fridge if you haven't got one built in uh, the one I had before I had a built-in fridge was a Waco uh, Cool Breeze, I think it was. It was uh, what you need to look for is something higher rating than minus 18 degrees because cab temperature is generally between 18 and 22 degrees. So if you're pumping that type of air, that temperature air, into your fridge you're never really going to be keeping your food cool because you're only you're, you're pumping in it pumping in air and keeping your full food at about six degrees so especially milk will go off whereas try and get you a get yourself a decent one which is minus 26 28 degrees you always know your fridge is going to keep keep cool also on that point with your fridges never put it in the footwell unless you can turn the heater blowers off the floor especially in the winter because again all your milk and everything will be going off in the fridge always put one on the passenger seat or between the seats if you've got the space so that's what I do fridge wise cooking wise um, you don't want to be buying McDonald's or KFC or chip shop junk food all the time because you're just going to be a lot of fat bastard and also it's going to cost you a fortune 
I can easily spend 70, 80 pound a week on junk food. I don't do it, but that's how much you can spend a week. If you think about services, for an average McDonald's meal, you're talking about seven quid. And if you have one, say if you have breakfast, you have a lunch and then you have tea, work that out yourself, 21 quid a day. And over five days, that's 100 quid of your hard earned cash. So, don't do it. What I used to do, I used to have a little single burner gas hob. That's if your company allows it in the trucks. Right? With the single burners, you can boil a kettle, you can uh, put a saucepan on top, and you can even get a flat toaster plate from truck stops. They sell flat truck toaster plates with better fibre. You just stick it on top of the burner, turn the burner on, put a piece of bread on, and it turns it into toast. Only problem with the burners, what I found, is you'll be living off tin food, and again, tin food is not good for you. Full of salts and saturates and fats and all sorts of crap to keep it, you know, have a longer life in the tin. Um, it does ruin your insides, believe me. The smell in your truck is not nice. So, the the other option is to get yourself a high wattage inverter. I've got a 3000 watt. Uh, make sure you ask the company first if you're allowed to do that because it will need wiring in professionally. Um, and then you can run a microwave if you've got the room for a microwave or you can run in a toaster machine, uh, you know, a sandwich toaster, a toaster. Uh, I run a microwave, a toaster and a kettle, not all at the same time, but I run those. And since I've been doing that, it's been great. It's so much cheaper. The missus makes my dinners on the weekend. I take them to work. I've got a little freezer in the top of my fridge. So, Monday and Tuesday, I've got Wednesday and Thursday meals in the freezer. Wednesday, take them out and they're good to go. And then, You've got you've got hot food on the night time, and you know all you're doing is reheating a meal that was cooked at home, which a lot of pubs and a lot of uh, lay by calves they all just reheat food. So there's no difference really. You're saving a fortune. You just need plenty of Tupperwares and some way of washing up. I use a washing up bowl, boil the kettle before I um, have any food put it in the bowl with some washing up liquid and by the time you've finished eating your food it's about the right temperature to get your hands in and wash up and then all you need is a towel dry the stuff off put it away and then just hang the towel out the window have a nice if it's not raining jobs are good and so that's food sorted now most important to stop you going insane is entertainment Right. because of a night time or on your rest period I, should, period I should say you are going to need something to do whether it's play musical instruments read books watch TV watch crap on your phone you need something to do um, I've got a laptop uh, I'll be editing videos obviously but also I watch films I've also run the TV off the inverter and I'll just use a Chromecast straight off my laptop, straight to the TV, and you can well, stream anything. Internet wise, again, it's solely up to yourself. I'm with EE, so I have a lot of data on my, my laptop's got a SIM card in it. Also, my phone's got a lot of data on, so I just hop spot it to the, to the laptop. So, that's your entertainment sorted. Now, if you're lucky enough, or unlucky enough with what's going on recently, to be able to stop in labour, uh, to stop in service stations on a regular basis, whether you've got a Snap account or you can um, pay for it on your fuel card. Brilliant. Most service stations nowadays have got showers and washing facilities, so your morning and afternoon wash or whatever you have. A 
sorted. If you have to find your own places to pull over for the rest period, utilise your washing up bowl. All you've got to do is, after you've washed up in it, you empty the washing up bowl and then you just use a bit of cold water or even an antibacterial wipe, give it a once round and then in the morning it's good to go for a wash. Again, boil your kettle if you want to or just use cold water. I always have a cold water wash in the morning because it wakes me up and to be honest I like it. So cold water wash in the morning. Over night time what I generally do, if I can't stop at the services because I haven't got time or I haven't been able to for whatever reason, I'll have a full body baby wipe wash. So that means half a pack of baby wipes all over your body and then you know you're clean and then just have a wash as you would do hands and face and brush your teeth got to look after those teeth now another thing with tramping a lot of people in my opinion make the mistake of driving with shoes on or driving with your outdoor shoes on so when you get in the truck and your shoes are dirty all that dust is then going all over your cab and that means if you're sleeping at night you're breathing in that dust which isn't any good for you <clears throat> it'll make it'll make you ill if you're in an arctic you'll find that most arctics the doors covers the steps so you can put your shoes inside the steps dickhead you can put your, door, your shoes inside the steps doors will cover the steps, that'll stop the dust getting inside the cab, and then if you don't like driving barefoot, which I always drive barefoot, have a pair of slippers or a pair of crocs or something, right, now what I do is I have a pair of crocs, not to drive in, but if I'm just nipping out to the shop or nipping out to the services or anything like that, I'll stick my crocs on because I know the floor isn't going to be dirty and dusty, and my crocs live in the passenger steps anyway. But also, the crocs I use for when I go for a shower in services. You don't want to go in the showers barefoot because it's Veruca City. Right? So I would definitely get yourself either a pair of flip flops or a pair of crocs. And then you know your feet are protected then. Obviously, personal hygiene is down to yourself. Change your clothes depending on how many nights you're out. I've always got plenty of clothes in here, plenty of working stuff. Um, waterproofs mainly you need waterproofs especially now the winter's coming you don't want to be getting in your truck soaking wet and then having to drive for three hours down the road because you'll be itching your ass and you'll probably crash so waterproofs if it takes you 10 minutes to put your waterproofs on in your cab do it and then when you get back in your cab it's a bit of a fiddle but try and get your waterproofs off at the door rather than traipsing through dirt and mud and you know rain water into your cab the idea is keep your cab as tidy as you can like you would at home because you've got to live in it and the dirtier the cab is that means the dirtier you are and it's a bad idea so basically i think we've covered everything main important thing bedding you've got to get yourself a good night's sleep food and drink as I said if you if you like drinking water get yourself plenty of spring water just cheap spring water because you don't want to if you're traveling all over the country you don't know where the taps you know the water in the taps are coming from because they could be terrible mate I'm telling you terrible I've, I've actually had a bad stomach off drinking tap water that I had from some service station up north and so now on from now on from that moment on sorry I buy spring water and I buy it from Lidl it's only the same stuff as what you buy from the service station for £2.29 except for I get 12 litres for about 30 pence and then if you want to put a bottle of that in the fridge you can and you've got fresh water so that's what I do even for washing up water same against it's any cheap and then you can keep your bottles you can keep your bottles for screen wash you can keep your bottles for fairy washing liquid for the obvious toilet times you know 
I don't have a wee in my truck in a bottle because that's dirty. But what I do do is if I'm desperate for a wee and I can't get to a toilet, I'll get out of the truck and I'll have a wee in the bottle and then I'll disperse the bottle in the bin. Because a lot of the lay boys, you know, it's stick a piss because dirty fuckers just get out and piss and shit everywhere and it's disgusting. So at the end of the day families pull up into these lay boys to have a rest from driving. They don't want to get out to stretch the legs and all they can smell is, you know, us lot. So yeah. If you ever do get caught short and you need a number two, you know, a big dirty crap. Toilet rolls, baby wipes, anything like that, but for God's sake doing in a bag underneath your truck if you can and then put the bag in the bin nobody's going to have a go at you for putting a bag of shit in the bin somebody will have a go at you for shitting on the floor that somebody just drove over yeah and then it's just cleaning products what cleaning products to buy whatever you want if you want to be sad and go and spend six quid a bottle on chrome from the, mouth, the uh, truck stops you can do that if you want to do what I do, get a pound stretcher and buy, uh, I can't remember what it's called, pear drops, pearl drops or something like that, um, pound a bottle and you know it lasts six months, you get screen what, you get uh, glass cleaner, antibacterial cleaner, uh, air freshener, air fragrance, and then some sort of upholstery cleaner and, and dash shine and all that rubbish if you want, if that's what, how far you want to go with it. But it's just keeping it clean. If you're in an Arctic and you've got the chance to have an air duster, I would suggest getting an air duster. And then, you know, every couple of times a week, you just open your doors and blow all the dust off the floor, uh, off the dashboard outside, or get yourself a vacuum. But that is mainly tramping that's what it's all about keeping clean keeping yourself entertained on the night or in the day keeping yourself fed watered like you would do at home don't be naive going into a tramping job with nothing we've had a sat nav we've had a bag of clothes we've had some food we've had some water because believe me you're either going to be skint or you're going to regret it so make sure you think about it. Anyway, Black Country Trucker, signing off. Thank you very much. Please subscribe.